Although so many people traveled the Oregon Trail, each one came with a different motive. Farmers, fur traders, and missionaries were just a few groups of people that came for the fertile land and plentiful game. Missionaries, however, came looking for land to settle missions on. Also, the others who traveled came because of the rumors of better living conditions, little illness, and freedom. These many adventures drew travelers in one by one, along with the idea of endless adventures. The Oregon Trail came with many excitements along with a large diverse people. Some of these came from Europe, China, Asia, and Hungary. Each one coming with a large idea of what their new life would be like. African Americans made up a lot of the new population as well. Many of them were escaped slaves from the South and Middle West, and they eventually became cowboys. Another very popular culture that traveled the trail were Native American tribes, including Sioux, Pawnee, Shoshone, and the Bannock. The large number of ethnic groups would soon become one population. The business number on the trail was a very small amount. However, many of the travelers traded between different groups. The most popular items traded were clothes, food, and weaponry. There were, there were some parties on the trail who tried to earn money by hunting and giving sightseeing tours. When there were merchants on the trail, popular items that were sold were moccasins, herbs, and fresh food instead of the dried food most families took with them. When they reached Oregon City, very few doctors lived there and most of the jobs there were miners and farmers. The people who took these jobs were uneducated workers and former soldiers. One of the many families that traveled the Oregon Trail was the Marshall family. They were a family of six and planned to meet their family in Oregon Territory. Mama and Papa were farmers, Harriet was a landowner, Sarah was a teacher, Henry was the captain of a steamship, and William was a successful farmer. The Marshalls traveled at a rate of 15 miles per day in the blistering heat. A source states, we walked 10 miles in the pouring rain, and when it wasn't raining, the dusty road wasn't an upgrade. Another group that actually helped the Marshall family were the Nez Perce people. They traded with the Marshalls important goods such as coffee, tobacco, and a silver belt buckle. One site that many travelers came upon were graves of those who had passed on the 2,000 mile journey. This brought spirits down dramatically. Also, another view were the many herds of bison that crossed the trail. However, these herds would delay the trip for hours. Many would kill them for food to take for the rest of the trip. A family of six traveled the Oregon Trail in the year of 1852. We planned on joining our relatives in Oregon County. I never really understood the reason why we went since I was so young. But I realize now we were looking for a new life and fertile land in Oregon. We departed from Sydney, New York on April 3rd. The traveling conditions were very harsh and high. The, the trail was dusty and we walked from 10 to 15 miles a day. Some days there were bison herds on the side of the road causing delayed travel to hunt and kill the buffalo. The members of my family each had a role to follow every day while traveling. Papa rode a horse that pulled the wagon and tended to the animals we brought. He often assisted the wagon driver by riding along the horse and he fixed many repairs needed on the wagon. Mama watched us children and helped tend to any medical needs. William, Harriet, Henry, and I helped with simple farm tasks at stopping points like Alcove Springs and Fort Hall. We fed animals and helped plant and plow crops. When we were on our way to Oregon country, we met Nez Peace, a tribe of Native Americans. They aided us on our journey by trading with my family. My papa gave them coffee beans, silver belt buckles, and tobacco, and in return the Native Americans gave us a horse. I remember seeing many crosses on the side of the road. On one day, asked Papa what they were for and he answered me saying many people lost their lives in search of new territory. After six treacherous months of travel, we came about our destination. Oregon City was like heaven. There was a plentiful amount of jobs for newcomers and there were many skilled service shops and manufactured goods. After arrival, my family found jobs in 
fields that interest me. Mr. Harrier became a landowner and I found an occupation of a successful farmer. Henry, my other brother, became a steamship captain. Truthfully, there were only two ways to travel on the Oregon Trail, walking or riding in a wagon. Both children and adults would walk approximately 10 to 20 miles per day. This would mean walking from dawn to dusk. By the end of the day, most people's feet would be covered in blisters, which would make the walk filled with excruciating pain and would definitely not benefit the rest of the trip. However, traveling in a wagon was not much easier. The wagon was usually covered by canvas and the wagon itself was a farm wagon from a land a traveler once owned. These wagons were usually pulled by oxen or mules. The animals carried on average about 2,000 pounds. Also, some wagons were able to float in water. This came to use when a party crossed a deep river. Most of the people that rode in the wagon were elderly, very sick, or very young. The Oregon Trail was filled with many obstacles, including Native American attacks, weather, accidents, hypothermia, animals, disease, lack of supplies, vehicle damage, and family disputes. Native American attacks only happened to about 10,000 travelers, which is a very small percentage out of the millions of pioneers who traveled the trail. Plus, most of the attacks were over-exaggerated to make them sound worse than they really were. Although, disease was one of the most deadly obstacles. A popular disease at this time was cholera because of the dirty water the parties would drink. Hypothermia was also very common because of the weather and cold rain. Most travelers brought dried foods with them and when they were ready to eat, the travelers soaked the food in water. Some of the common foods were bacon, ham, beans, and rice. Travelers would put buckets of cream underneath their wagon so the bumps they went over would churn it into butter as well. Bedding was also a necessity for the trip. Quilts and blankets were always packed with the rest of the supplies. Along with those, a minor supply was money. Travelers needed money to cross the rivers on the toll or to pay Native American groups to lead them to a checkpoint. Without money, most pioneers would have gotten nowhere. Life on the Oregon Trail was hard. Many obstacles got in the way of travelers and sometimes resulted in death. Native Americans attacked and killed almost 1,850 immigrants. Weather conditions on the trail and diseases were among the top killers of travelers. Survival on the trail included packing household supplies in the wagons. The travelers' bedding, food, and other materials were all packed tightly in the wagons to ensure their safety. Many families on the Oregon Trail used wagons or walking as their way of transportation. They often traveled 10 to 20 miles per day from dawn to dusk. The starting point of the Oregon Trail was Independence, Missouri, and this point contained Independence Rock, which is where many travelers wrote their names for a record. The next two stops that followed the Mississippi River were St. Joseph, Missouri, and Council Bluffs, Iowa. After the travelers reached these stops, they switched over to the Santa Fe Trail for 40 miles before they reached Fort Kearney. This location was in Nebraska, which also turned the trail northwest. Turning this direction would soon lead travelers towards Fort Laramie, following the Platte River. After crossing South Pass, located near Platte River, families would make their way through the Rocky Mountains and across Snake River, then eventually across the Blue Mountains. The final destinations of the travelers were Oregon City, Fort Vancouver, and Wilmette Valley of Oregon. Native Americans were often seen on the trail. However, they also provided aid and service to the travelers. An example is the story of Lewis and Clark and how they were led by Sacagawea. These Native American guides helped maneuver travelers through mountain ranges, cross rivers, land canoes, and helped with trade. The most well-known towns and stopping points along the trail were Fort Hall, Fort Boys, Alcove Springs, Fort Laramie, Chimney Rock, Snake River, and Kansas River. These stops were good for trade and kept parties going in the right direction. There were very few resources that the trail provided in the tr to the travelers. Although the trail included very few trees and most of its water supply was dirty, water was a needed supply for laundry and nutrients. Pioneers along the trail weren't able to farm because of the dry land. 
The trail was also known as the Great American Desert because of this. A bonus to the trip were the amount of animals found and the meat travelers got from them. Because of the harsh environment, families brought their own supplies such as coffee, sugar, aprons, bedding, and vinegar. Commonly seen wildlife were bison and oxen. Bison were wild while oxen usually pulled the wagons. Mules could also be found on the trip. Travelers had to be very careful when it came to stampedes. Along with the rattlesnakes, these were known to be the deadliest animals on the trip. Other commonly seen animals were antelopes, rabbits, and prairie chickens. Geography of the Oregon Trail took a big part in our six-month journey. Okay, the Gold Rabbit Trail minutes. was over 2,000 miles long and stretched through prairies, desert, mountains, flooded rivers, and many states. On the trail, many pioneers ran into wild animals. Travelers feared attacks on their wagons from charging buffalo and oxen. Natural resources on the Oregon Trail were sometimes hard to find. There was little water or it was too dirty to drink, and trees weren't that common. Towns and stopping points on the trail were regular sites. The most frequent towns were Fort Hall, a major trading post, and Fort Boys, a resting place.